From the MidwestSports.net studio, this is Midwest Sports Saturday. Hi, I'm Joey McWilliams. Glad to be with you on this Saturday again. We have been from place to place around the campuses here of Arkansas, Iowa, Kansas, Missouri, Nebraska, Oklahoma, and we have been in Weatherford. We've been in Searcy. We've been in Tahlequah last week. Well, we're in studio today, as you saw from the opening graphic. There's been some rain around the Midwest over the last couple of days, and so we're going to be inside today. We're going to be, I guess, at home. This is our home field Try to take advantage of that if we can. So let's go ahead and get started. Lots of video today, lots from around the area. Uh, we have football, we have volleyball, we have soccer to talk about today, lots of those things, so we invite you to stick around. Let's start with Division II football, the MidwestSports.net regional rankings where Northwest Missouri in the top spot at 3-0 and retains that top spot. Winners last week over Missouri Southern, 63 nothing. They go on the road today to take on Central Oklahoma. By the way, none of our MidwestSports.net regional ranked teams, the top 10 here, taking on any of the others in the top 10. So uh, matchups in which you might think, well, many of these top 10 teams may go on for a victory today. We'll see. Southern Arkansas, the number two team in the Midwest, 3-0, and defeated Southwestern last week, 36-12. And they are hosting Northwestern Oklahoma today. The Mule Riders in Magnolia. Number three, Pitt State. They defeated Northeastern State 45-7. to We were in Tahlequah to watch that last week. And they are hosting Nebraska Kearney today. Nebraska Kearney just falling out of our rankings. And so should be a good matchup today in Kansas. Washita as the Tigers defeated Southeastern on the road last week 32-16. They host East Central today. Number five, Central Missouri continues to roll. They took out Missouri Western last week 51-14. Back-to-back week scoring more than 50 points. And the redshirt freshman Hunt in on the start there. They are on the road today at Topeka taking on Washburn. It's number six, Fort Hayes State defeated, uh, or they are at Missouri Southern today. And Harding, they are hosting, or excuse me, yes, hosting Oklahoma Baptist after a victory over Southern Nazarene. They shut out the Crimson Storm 42-0 last week. Emporia State, our number eight team, uh, defeated Nebraska Kearney 2017, and they're hosting Lindenwood today. Number nine, Chadron State, it's uh, on the road today at Colorado School of the Mines, defeated Fort Lewis last week, 31-21. And our number 10 team in the Midwest Sports.net regional rankings, Missouri S&T, uh, they lost to Drake. Division One Drake last week, 52-12, remain in the top 10. They're on the road today, and the only team in our top 10 uh, going out of conference to play, they're in Alabama today to take on Tuskegee. That's a look at the Division Two top 10 football games and our rankings there. Let's move on over to volleyball now. Let's stick with Division II, NCAA Division II. It was Washburn with the big win last week over Nebraska Kearney, the number one team in our rankings and the number one team in the country, according to the AVCA. And, well, they move up to the top of our rankings. Uh, number one, Washburn. Number two, Nebraska Kearney. Number three, Central Oklahoma. Our number four team is Central Missouri. Number five, Wayne State. Number six, Rockhurst. The seventh-ranked team, Henderson State, we'll talk about them in just a moment, 15-2, and two, and they've won 14 straight. Number eight, Pitt State. Number nine, Northwest Missouri. And moving into the, to the top ten, those uh, seven, eight, and nine teams. Number ten also, Southwestern Oklahoma, seven and one on the season. Well, we had an opportunity to find out a little bit more about that Henderson State squad. Again, 14 consecutive victories after opening the season, one and two. The Sports Information Director at Henderson State, David Sally, had an opportunity to sit down with Coach Phil McDaniel and talk about the streak and talk about the season. We're here with Henderson State Head Volleyball Coach Phil McDaniel. And Coach, what is going on right now with you guys? I mean, you guys are so hot, it's unbelievable. This start to the season, I think, you know, we've talked about this before, but everybody expects to win. Um, but this start to the season is pretty unreal. So what, what, is, what is your mindset right now? What's the vibe of this team like right now? You know, obviously it's been very good. Uh, the, the, the players are, are gelling well together. They're working hard in practices. Uh, they're working hard from since day one of fall camp. Our goal's always been, you know, 20 wins on the season. You know, that was kind of what we talked about beginning of the season. But to come out this this uh, uh, on fire, kind of like we have the past, uh, you know, umpteen matches now, and it's, 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 it's been a good run. And so it's, we, don't, we, we talk about it a little bit every now and then in the, in the, in the locker room, mm -hmm. but it's not an expectation. You know, we're just going to keep rolling with it match by match. Yeah. So, I mean, 14 wins now. You started the season 1-2, and two, now you've won 13 in a row. So you've got 14 wins, 14 wins all last season, which is your first year here. So, you know, at this point, um, 14 wins, what's changed? What's changed from this year uh, coming from last year? 
know, the biggest thing that we really talk about is just making sure that, you know, I think last year we were wanting to, to prove things to people. So our, our goal was that we were the underdogs and that we're going to go chase everybody. The thing we talk about, you know, in the locker room is now it's going to change. Now you're the chase. And so whenever um, that happens, you're going to get everybody's best punch right off the, 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 the start of the match. And so we have to match that intensity. We have to we have to be focused. We have to make sure that we're prepared so that we can take everybody's best punch and then counter punch and then, and then make those changes along the way, just along the way through the match. Right. So your latest win, Tuesday night against Arkansas Tech up in Russellville, you beat them 3 nothing. And Arkansas Tech, I think most people would say, has been kind of the standard program in our league. Absolutely. Yeah. So at this point, you know, Goals wise, do do things change? I mean, what's the goals for the team now? Are you looking? You think in championship, we can win a championship with this team? Is that your your preaching to the team at this point? I think we've got a championship caliber team. You know, we are balanced. We are um, uh, we are um, old enough in the right positions and young enough in the right positions that that, that we can certainly make a run. You know, um, you know, we obviously got to stay healthy. Um, we certainly have to keep that intensity and that focus up. And as long as we do that, you know, it's the, the sky's the limit for this team. We've got um, some things that we can always get better at, but I really love where we're at now. And now we can start adding some, some wrinkles into our uh, into our offense. And as long as our defense plays as, as well as they have been the past couple of weeks, we're going to be in good shape. Coach, thanks for your time. I appreciate it. That was head coach Phil McDaniel of the Red Hot Henderson State Reddies. Special thanks, of course, to David Sally Sports, Sally Sports Information Director at Henderson State uh, for bringing us that video, being a part for, uh, of that, and we'll get a chance to hear a little bit more from the Reddies later on on Midwest Sports Saturday. And Henderson State, again, 15-2, and 4-0 and in conference play in the Great American Conference, coming up a big matchup against Harding, and that will be on Monday in Arkadelphia. We look at our division three regional rankings within the MidwestSports.net footprint. Hendricks, uh, the Hendricks Warriors moving into the top spot from the number three spot two weeks ago. Our regional rankings in volleyball coming out bi-weekly, and the Warriors are 10-1 and one on the year. It's Buena Vista in at number two, eight and three on the season. Coe is our number three team. Washington, St. Louis in at number four. Grinnell at five. Loris in at number six. It is Dubuque at number seven. Cornell at 8, number 9, Westminster, and number 10, Luther in our Midwest Sports Regional Rankings in Division 3 Volleyball. We move on over to the NAIA, and lots of teams really doing well there. Let's open it up. Our number 1 team stays number 1 in this past week's rankings. Grandview, 12-0 on the season. The Vikings in at number 1. Park in at number 2. 14 and 0 now, 14 consecutive victories. That seems to be a theme around here. 14 consecutive victories. Well, the Pirates in at number two, and I believe they were number one in the NAIA national rankings as well. It's Columbia at number three, moving up for number four. Midland at number four right now. McPherson at number five. Number six, Missouri Baptist also has now won 14 consecutive matches. Again, a bit of a theme there. Central Methodist at number seven. Our number eight team, Hastings, number nine, Clark, and number 10, Mount Mercy. Now, we had an opportunity to get to hear a little bit from Grandview this week as the Grandview Sports Information Director, Jerry Nagel, spoke with Coach Tina Carter, who's in her 11th season at Grandview, about the impressive start to their season. I've enjoyed our schedule. I thought it was really good. I thought it was really challenging so far. I'm looking forward to getting into the meat of the conference schedule to kind of start seeing some conference teams and working toward our goal of a conference championship. I know we've got three coming up next week, so it'll be a pretty busy week for us. And um, CMU is also undefeated in the conference, so that match next Friday looks to be pretty important. Uh, they just broke into the top 25 too, so it'll be another ranked opponent, and it's at home, so, yeah. At 12 and 0, the wins have been there, but they haven't all been sweeps. As a matter of fact, six of the 12 wins have come against nationally ranked opponents, and Coach Carter spoke about how the team has handled the pressure so far. I think the girls are, are um, I think they're just kind of taking it in stride. I know that not every match has been easy, so that's been part of it, too, is that they've been tested. So it's not been... 3-0 sweep, 3-0 sweep with no drama or no adversity or anything like that. So that's good. The, <laughs> um, the, uh, the cool part is that we have an entire week off right now. So we've been able to go back and kind of reevaluate what we're doing. So we've been able to 
train and work on the things that we feel like maybe we're not very good at. The girls have gone back and watched video on themselves instead of on their opponents to see all of these things that we're asking them to do, they need to be able to see themselves doing it. So we had them watch video when they thought they played really well and video when they thought they struggled and then kind of start to analyze their game. And then we're hoping that that carries over into the next two days of training before we go into a weekend off. So it's, it's kind of been a rare bye week and I'm hoping that the girls are really enjoying just getting in the gym and training instead of traveling and all of that stuff to get better somewhere in the middle. Strong play from all around the board from the Vikings. The offense looking good, however, however, with uh, play from Kelsey Redmond and Courtney Twitt as their kills per set, and they have a good, solid hitting percentage this season as well. And Coach Carter talked about what their play has meant to this season. I think it just shows their senior status. I think, you know, it's four years in, in the making, and so this year I think they're just – they're at the point where they're at the top of their game and they're understanding all of the things that we've been asking them to do in order to be successful and now they're seeing success on the court so that only just continues to add to it. Again the Grandview Vikings 12-0 and on the year coming in to this weekend and they'll get things going a little bit a uh, little bit later on next week as well. Let's look at our top 10 in the NAIA and we move over to soccer and have an opportunity to look there really quickly. A big upset taking place last night. Missouri Western with a win over Central Missouri. Now, Central Missouri, the defending national champions in Division II women's soccer. Missouri Western had never beaten UCM. Come away with a victory last night, so that's a huge win right there. Of course, uh, the number one team in the Midwest, in the, in the uh, region, in the nation as well. So first loss of the season for the for the Jennies, excuse me, for the Mules, for the Jennies uh, soccer program and Missouri Western with a big upset there. Now, Central Missouri, the only team in the Midwest Sports.net footprint that was in the top 25 United Soccer Coaches poll this week. One of the teams, though, on the outside looking in, just on the outside looking in, was Central Oklahoma. As a matter of fact, if the top 25 poll had been ad advanced to 226, UCO would have been in the rankings right there. Sports Information Director Chris Brannick from Central Oklahoma had an opportunity this week to talk with Mike Cook, the coach of the UCO Broncos, about this season and really what's gone into having such a hot start. Well, I think we've got a much better mentality this year. Uh, the girls bought into what we try to do in the spring, bringing the team together, working on some things that really help build team unity. Uh, the new players that have come in have transitioned in very well. And everybody's uh, you know, on the same page with the same goal. Let's go out and take care of business every game and uh, make sure we uh, you know, get the job done each time. Yeah, you've got a good mix of the, of the veteran leaders. And Katie Killian has six goals in six games. Uh, and some of the Morgan Cherry and Aisha Hale, some of the older girls have scored for you. But you're also getting a lot of play in from those freshmen that are on the back line that are playing very well and the goalkeeper playing very well. So uh, how do you get that kind of complete buy-in from all from the young and the old there well we're trying to get the older players to uh you know just buy into the fact that they're here to uh you know do their job be leaders but also to leave a legacy for the younger players on how we do things how we train how we work uh the right mentality off and on, on and off the field uh and they're really buying into that as well and trying try to leave a legacy for for the younger players to move forward all right you've played a couple of conference teams in non-conference games you'll do that again this weekend and then you'll start conference play and the same weekend uh what is it? What is it like now to transition into that game, where into that stretch of games where they they are more a little more serious, so to speak? Well, we you know we tell them there's kind of three seasons in a year: our non-conference, then our conference, and then the postseason or whatever. So we felt like we got really well, well prepared during the non-conference games for a tough conference schedule. Uh, it's always tough in this conference, especially going on the road. So uh, we're trying to get that mentality that we've got to go out on the road and uh, get the job done there as well. What do you have to do to continue that success that you've had this season? Just got to not get complacent. Um, you know, every game is just a game. We go on to the next one. Um, you know, go in with some confidence, uh, but knowing that we got to work for 90 minutes every game to get, to get the win. All right, Central Oklahoma takes on Missouri Southern Friday night at 6, and then Southwest Baptist and what will be the conference opener Sunday at 1 o'clock in Bolivar, Missouri. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. We were in Tahlequah last week, and following our presence there, Central 
Went on the road, took on Northeastern State, a fellow MIAA opponent there. I believe it was a non-conference match at that point in time. Come away with a victory there. Both teams undefeated at the time. The Broncos with the win there. They'd moved to 6-0, and 7-0 and now, and they take on Southwest Baptist on Sunday. And the Broncos soccer team, of course, with the seven victories, they've been scored on just one time all year long. Now they're taking on Southwest Baptist, and the Bearcats 0-6-1 coming into the year, but they've scored the lone goal against UCO this season. Kelsey Gibson, by the way, in goal, six of those victories, she has six clean sheets. Thanks to Chris Brannick from Central Oklahoma and Coach Mike Cook for being a part of the show today on Midwest Sports Saturday. Let's look in, uh, look back to some football now for a moment. Division Three football with games taking place across the Midwest Sports .net regional footprint. Hendricks at Austin College today. It's Central at Dubuque. Coe at Buena Vista. Grinnell at Beloit, Grinnell taking on St. Norbert, Loris at Luther, Wartburg at Nebraska Wesleyan. By the way, a note about Nebraska Wesleyan, the basketball team, men's basketball team, which finished with a national championship last week, or last year, excuse me, has uh, already been ranked the preseason number one team in Division Three for the, uh, the Prairie Wolves there. Westminster at St. Scholastica, and Carthage at Washington St. Louis. Washington 1-1 one one on the season. The Bears are, and they're looking to improve from last week's matchup. Quarterback Johnny Davidson talked about how his team played and what they can do to uh, right the ship, make things happen this week at home. So obviously, you know, we played some very good football in the second half. Uh, first half, not so much. But, um, you know, going forward, we're going to try and go more of a complete game or play more of a complete game. Um, obviously, we know we're capable of doing a lot um, offensively uh, like we did in the second half. And just going forward, we got to, you know, start to finish. we got to start out. Um, that's why we do stuff out here like we do the go period right away, uh, right after warm-ups. Um, we just get going real quick. Um, and that's something the coaches are trying to instill in us is to come out fast. Um, that's just something we got to do, come out against Carthage and do the rest of the way through the CCIW. Johnny Davidson, quarterback, the punter, and a Division Three preseason All-American. And, of course, they're hosting Carthage today. Now that is Washington, the Bears, getting ready for that. Well, sticking with football, let's go ahead and move on now to the NAIA right now. Our MidwestSports.net regional rankings. And we have Morningside as the number one team in the Midwest. Morningside 3-0 and now on the season. They defeated Dakota Wesleyan last week 66-13. And they are hosting Briar Cliff today. Briar Cliff just outside our rankings should be a good matchup today at Morningside. Northwestern Iowa, the number two team in the MidwestSports.net regional rankings. 3-0, they defeated Midland last week in a battle of two teams that were in our top ten. And still are Midland 49-20, the Northwestern Red Raider win last week today at Dakota Wesleyan. Number three, Evangel, 4-0 and on the year, and Evangel just continues to climb up our rankings. They defeated Peru State last week, 35-13. They are hosting Culver Stockton today. Langston, 1-0. and Now, Langston's the number four team in our MidwestSports.net regional rankings. Langston's had a couple of games that have just gone by the wayside with weather. 1-0, and and last week facing NCAA Division I opponent Southern on the road. The game was canceled due to lightning. Uh, they are going to be in Sooner Athletic Conference play today as they are hosting Southwestern Assemblies of God. It's number five, Kansas Wesleyan in our rankings, 3-0 and on the year. They defeated Sterling last week, the preseason favorite in the KCAC, 42-7. to Kansas Wesley and the Coyotes with the win there. They are hosting Ottawa today, and that is a matchup of two teams in our top ten as Ottawa is the number six team in our MidwestSports.net regional rankings. Ottawa also 3-0. and One team will pick up a loss today. Ottawa with a victory last week over Bethany, 42-35. Avila, the number seven team. It's Avila continues to climb in our rankings. The Eagles now 3-0 on the year. They defeated Bethel last week, 35-29. Tough matchup at home today against St. Mary. It's number eight, Grandview, coming into our rankings now, 2-1 and one on the year. And Grandview defeated Central Methodist last week, 47-27. They are idle this week, are the Vikings. They are on the road next week at Missouri Valley. It's Midland in at number nine, two and one on the year. Lost, we mentioned, to Northwestern last week, 49-20. And they are at Concordia today. And Benedictine in at number 10. Idol last week didn't move in the rankings. They are hosting Mid-America Nazarene today. Now, we talked about Avila just a little bit just a moment ago. And the Eagles, they were picked 
next to the bottom in the KCAC preseason poll. And, you know, I don't think that sat very well with them. As a matter of fact, it's been a little bit of a driving force as uh, we got to hear from Coach Mark Benavidez. He spoke about his team has approached the season and knowing what we know now and what they knew then, how it pushed them to get to this point. Yeah, being preseason ranked uh, 10th in the conference is definitely something that um, you know, our guys use as motivation, you know, no doubt. Uh, we didn't exactly do anything to prove that we we're better than 10th in the conference. Um, but having that mindset of, you know, the, the media and the coaches thinking that we were picked to win just one game against Bethel College uh, is definitely something that we knew that we were better than. Uh, we were confident that we could um, do some damage in this league and, and have some success even compared to last season. This is a completely different team, a lot of new players, a lot of different scheme changes on offense and defense, special teams, everything to where um, end of the day, you know, that's that's one of our big motivating factors. You know, in our locker room, we've got the coaches poll listed uh, all over the spot, all over the place, so guys can see that, you know, this team was ranked higher than us. That team was ranked higher than us. This this team is supposed to beat us, um, and you know, we're going to do whatever we can to keep pushing. Games aren't going to be easy. Uh, we've had a lot of close ones already, uh, but it's something to where our guys definitely have the confidence that they can go in uh, week in, week out, and, and compete against really anybody in this league. Thanks to Brandon Drogi from Avila for providing us with that video. Of course, Mark, of course, Mark Benavidez's team is at home today, and they are taking on St. Mary, looking to move to 4-0 and on the season. One previous 3-0 start to the year uh, to a season, so this is the second like to continue their hot streak as they move on. Well, we've gone from football. Let's go back and look at a little bit of volleyball again. We, we had an opportunity to get to hear not only from the coach at Henderson State about the winning streak from the Reddies. Well, we get a chance to hear from one of the players as well as Courtney Balf, second in the GAC in kills with 3.50 kills per set. Henderson State Sports Information Director David Sally had an opportunity to sit down with her and get the junior outside hitters take on the year so far. We're here with Courtney Bolt with the Henderson State volleyball team. Courtney, you know, you guys have started the season unbelievably. You've won 13 straight matches now. Mm -hmm. You're 14-2. and two. What's the vibe of the team like right now? How are you feeling just riding this wave of momentum? Yeah, it's amazing right now. I think a lot of people didn't expect us to do so well, you know, especially at the school. Like, we've never really done good in the Great American Conference. You know, my first year, my freshman year was the first year in making conference tournament. And I just feel like people, especially after last season, that's not making the tournament, people expect us not to do as well. And I think this is a really good time of events. You know, we've been having more people come out, more people asking me, hey, when's the volleyball game? You know, people are really interested now, and I think that that's just the cool thing. Yeah, you talk about the last couple of years, and really for a while the, the program has just struggled a little bit, and now all of a sudden all this success. What has changed specifically from this year compared to last year, but really as a whole, what do you think has changed within the program that's made this team so good? You know, Phil came in my freshman year around like February, March. So I feel like him being able to really recruit the people that he wanted to recruit, you know, and um, us really getting the off season with him, I think that helped a lot just so we can learn his program. You know, most of us are from a different coach. So I think just all that gelling together, I think that's kind of what changed. Right. So all the success, I mean, it's great, obviously. You always want to win as many games as you can, but sometimes all the success is something you have to learn how to deal with, and you're one of the leaders on the team. So what is your message to get the younger girls been when you start the season 14-2? and two? You know, I always tell them, don't, like, just stay humble because, you know, our conference is so up and down. You know, Hardy beat Arkansas Tech. Who would have thought? We beat Arkansas Tech. Who would have thought? You know, so it's kind of, it's just up and down. So you never know who you're going to get, when you're going to get it. You know, Arkansas Tech beat OBU the other day, 3-0. We already know it's probably going to go to five games just because it's Valor V. You know, you never know. So I just always tell them, you know, just take every game just like it's a new team, you know. Right. So you talked about the win on Tuesday night over Arkansas Tech. Obviously one of the biggest wins around here in a while. Absolutely. And now, you know, we're 14-2. and We've won 13 straight matches. Um, you talk about – everyone you talks about having goals before the season starts. Mm -hmm. At this point now with that win and the string of wins, what are your goals? What's the team's goals going forward? I mean, do the goals change? Uh, we're trying to go all the way. For sure, we want that ring. You know, we want two rings. Honestly, we don't want we don't want to want to just stop at one. You know, we want both of them. Um, I think minimum top three in the conference. Minimum. Awesome, so. Courtney. Thanks for your time. We appreciate Thank it. You. That was Courtney Bull, Henderson State volleyball team. Go Reddies. Yeah, go Reddies. Courtney Ball, the 
junior outside hitter for Henderson State. Thanks again for to David Sally for sitting down with Courtney for that visit as the Henderson State Reddies talked about a big matchup coming up. They're taking on the Harding Lady Bisons. Harding 4-0 in the GAC this year. Henderson State 4-0 in the GAC this year. Someone's going to pick up a loss on Monday as that is a big conference matchup in Arkadelphia. So we're looking to bring you information about that. All right, let's go ahead and run down things that are going to be happening on the football field this week. We talked about the Division Three football schedule, so let's move on over to Division Two now in the NCAA. Some matchups here. Some of them we've already uh, mentioned earlier this morning about our MidwestSports.net regional rankings. Well, uh, let's run down that top ten then. Northwest Missouri at Central Oklahoma today. Southern Arkansas hosting Northwestern Oklahoma. Pitt State hosting Nebraska Kearney. It's Washita that uh, staying at home in Arkadelphia. There's been a little rain around the Arkansas area today. Yeah, it could be a little wet over there. Taking on East Central. Central Missouri at Washburn today. Fort Hayes State at Missouri Southern. Taking on the Lions. Harding hosting the Bison. Oklahoma Baptist in town. Emporia State versus Linderwood. Lindenwood, excuse me, that will, will be... Uh, at Emporia, Chadron State on the road at Colorado Mines, Missouri S&T at Tuskegee. Looking also down through the list, southeastern Oklahoma on the road at Arkansas Monticello today. It's Southern Nazarene at Arkansas Tech. Uh, southwestern at Henderson State today. Upper Iowa at Southwest Minnesota State. Northeastern State on the road at Missouri Western Southwest Baptist at Lincoln. Truman State at Division I Valparaiso today. William Jewell on the road taking on UND. And Wayne State at Concordia St. Paul. From the NAI today, it's Baker at Graceland. Briar Cliff at, Mo Cliff at Morningside. Dakota State at Waldorf. Some of these uh, games we've already mentioned in the top ten matchups. Dort at Hastings. Missouri Baptist at St. Ambrose today. It's Northwestern at Dakota Wesleyan. William Penn at Central Methodist. Bethany at Southwestern. Bethel at Tabor, friends at Sterling, Midwest, or excuse me, Mid America Nazarene at Benedictine, and Ottawa taking on Kansas Wesley, and that is our number six versus number five team in the Midwest Sports Regional Rankings. There, St. Mary at Avila today, Culver Stockton at Evangel, Missouri Valley at Peru State, Jamestown at Doan, and Midland at Concordia, Wayland Baptist at Oklahoma Panhandle today, and Langston trying to pick up the second victory of the season. They host Southwestern Assemblies of God. And from the Division I ranks, we have this matchup today. Some of you will get to see some of these games actually nationally televised. Arkansas at Auburn today, Prairie View at Pine Bluff, UNLV at Arkansas State, Akron at Iowa State, Wisconsin at Iowa, Hampton at Northern Iowa, Kansas at Baylor, Kansas State at West Virginia. It's Georgia at Missouri. It's a noon kickoff time, not very far from now. And Southwest Missouri State at Eastern Kentucky. Nebraska at Michigan. This one seems like it came right out of the 1940s. Army at Oklahoma today. That one could be interesting. Texas Tech at Oklahoma State. And on Thursday night, it was Temple over Tulsa, 31-17. And that was the final score. We'll try to bring you some scores uh, throughout the day and update some things a little bit later on. In the meantime, this has been Midwest Sports Saturday from our MidwestSports.net studio. We're going to be back on campus again next week, have a few more guests, have some more video from around the Midwest sports region, and we're really excited to get to bring that to you. I want to say thanks to all the folks who have helped today. Also, special thanks to the sports information departments from all around and all the video that we got to bring to you from Henderson State De Sports Information Director David Sally, from Grandview Sports Information Director Jerry Nagel, uh, Central Oklahoma Sports Information Director Chris Brannick, from Washington Sports Information Director Chris Mitchell, and from Avila Sports Information Director Brandon Dogie. We sure do, or Drogi, we sure do appreciate all of the help in that. Thanks to my family also for allowing me to get to bring you these things each and every week. I'm very grateful to all of them. So that is it for Midwest Sports, dot, Sports Saturday on this Saturday, September 22nd. We'll be back a little bit later on. God bless you all. Thank you again for watching, and have a great day.